Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So yes, it is almost official. Nikki Haley of all people is poised to enter the 2024 Republican presidential race and the clown car is building up. And we talked about this a few weeks ago because she gave a non-answer about running in 2024, which was very different than what she had to say in 2021, but she apparently seems to be jumping in the presidential race. And she's not the only one that's doing this, by the way, and it's funny, and it just seems like the GOP establishment is going to have a massive problem on their hands ahead of 2024 because you have this ridiculous clown car. You can't exactly, you know, keep everybody in check in order for them to line up behind one nominee. And it's probably going to end up benefiting one person and one person only. And that person is going to be Donald Trump. So... We're going to dive into this, but it is the beginning of the month, which means I have to tell you guys about our very good friends over at Noble Gold. Noble Gold Investments is pleased to let you guys know that gold was the best investment class for 2022. Real estate, crypto, stocks, and bonds, gold outperformed all of them. So what are you waiting for? Noble Gold Investments has helped thousands of clients buy real physical gold. Open a gold or silver IRA with Noble Gold Investments this month and receive a free quarter ounce American Gold Eagle coin with every qualified IRA of $50,000. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments and their thousands of five-star reviews. So, Nikki Haley, February 15th, she is going to launch a run. She has touted a special announcement, which basically means that she is going to be running for president. There's no other special announcement that she'd be touting. There's no reason why she'd be going on record on Twitter and just tweeting out all these like generic things that she thinks are going to appeal to the base. Like she'll tweet CRT is bad or something like that. And it's just like, okay, like we know this already. It's not like you're really fooling anybody. We know who Nikki Haley is. She is Neocon Nikki or Neocon Nimrata is her actual birth name that she just doesn't use because it's not politically convenient for her. But either way, you you look at her record on issues like foreign policy. She is the reason why Trump's administration for at least the first couple of years was far more interventionist than it really had to be. She subverted it into having more neocon tendencies. On immigration, she's somebody who wants to increase the number of immigrants pouring into the country, especially at a time when we have a border crisis. You know, she's been on the record saying we need more immigration to enrich our culture, she says, and for the economy, because she doesn't believe that ordinary Americans are good enough. And that's a problem. She would be electorally unviable if she actually stepped in this race in terms of getting the nomination in a general election. She would make Ohio and Iowa competitive, and that would be awful. Ron DeSantis, who's been unproven in the Rust Belt, regardless, would be an electoral juggernaut in the Rust Belt compared to her. But the good news is she's not going to win this primary. And we talked about this before, and we'll talk about it again. We could go down and we could look at some of the, some of the polls that we've seen. Nikki Haley is down there at 4% at best. And that's basically it. She's probably going to struggle to get double digits in her home state of South Carolina. She's a ridiculous underperformer. You look at her in 2010. She had her race in South Carolina vote to the left of the national environment. And it's not like she went up against a super strong candidate or like a diehard blue dog or anything like that. I mean, you look at that race, she only won it by around, what, five points? And then even her race in 2014 wasn't exactly like a cakewalk for her compared to other Republicans uh, in South Carolina, despite being an un incumbent governor, which again, if you're an incumbent governor, you typically outperform uh, significantly if you have an approval rating that is even remotely decent. That's what we saw in 2022 on a you know wide scale there. But what we do know is that this is only going to cause Donald Trump to do better. And if you do support Trump, you should be supporting the clown car of candidates, which again, there are a lot of them. There are tons. And Mike Pence might throw his hat in the ring. They say Ted Cruz, you look at the candidates they're polling. We'll look at the candidates in a second. But either way, the recent poll that came out at a North Star Opinion Research, which again, has a DeSantis slant compared to other polls, 
shows DeSantis with 39% with Haley and Pence in the race, but 52% without them in the race. It's very evident the more candidates that are in the race splitting the vote away from like the diehard Trump base, it's going to help Donald Trump in 2024 in the primary. It's going to help him win just like they were in 2016. Although the clown car you are seeing now is more comparative to the 2020 uh, Democrat clown car than it is the 2016 Republican clown car. And this time, you're going to see a lot of candidates, possibly more than 17, jump in. I mean, we're really seeing this phenomenon happening where more and more people are running for president every election cycle. Didn't the Dems have like 27, 28 candidates in the race or so? Republicans could be honestly on their way there. I'm not going to say they're going to have that many, but I think they could easily eclipse the 17 that they had in 2016, which was unprecedentedly a ridiculously high number. You see Trump already declared. You see two other candidates declared. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're like major candidates or whatever, although if Joe Sestak counted towards that 27, I would assume that these uh, candidates technically could count, especially because Corey Stapleton is a statewide official. But you also have John Bolton, who voted for Biden and was just an awful neocon at his post as national security advisor. He's declared his intent to run. And you have Nikki Haley. Her announcement is pending. And you also have other people with their decisions pending. Obviously, DeSantis is somebody who we initially did not expect to run maybe a year or two ago. Now, he seems to want to throw his hat in the ring. You also have Hutchinson, the awful governor of Arkansas. You have Mike Pompeo, who is also expected to announce his run. A lot of these are just run-of-the-mill neocons, or in some cases, just full-on rhinos that are running. You also have people like Liz Cheney, Chris Christie, Boris Johnson. <laughs> I don't even know if that's real. Boris Johnson, this is Wikipedia, but he was born in America. Could he potentially run for president? I think he rescinded his citizenship, though, so I'm not entirely sure that he could do that or what exactly that's on the list for, but he, he technically could if he didn't rescind his uh, citizenship there. People like Christy Noam are listed. Mike Pence Francis Suarez, who voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016, who's the quote-unquote Republican mayor of Miami, Chris Sununu, and there's a lot more. There's, you know, people like John Kasich, they list, Greg Abbott. I wouldn't expect either of them to run. Uh, Brian Kemp, Rand Paul. I mean, if Trump wasn't in the race, I'm sure you would see a lot of these people throw their hat in the ring. But just because you see Trump and DeSantis in the race, you know, the clown car is probably going to be smaller than it could be, which is pretty funny. But what we do know is that the more candidates that are in the race, the more it helps none other than Donald Trump. And the real question will be, how will Trump handle these candidates in the primary? Will he debate? Will he try to do what he did in 2016, where he tries to go out there and mogs everybody on the debate stage, and it's hilarious? Does he still have that dog in him to, you know, throw out those one-liners that hit so hard? Like, is he going to effectively be able to frame his opponents to be members of the GOP establishment? Again, DeSantis is somebody who is a very skilled politician to a large degree compared to somebody like Jeb Bush, because DeSantis is somebody who has the backing of the establishment, but rhetorically speaking, at least as of late, has tried to be in line with the base as much as possible. So he's going to have to navigate that in a very interesting matter. We see him going out there. He's calling him a globalist. He's attacking his donors. I think that that's a decent strategy for the time being, although DeSantis is technically not in the race yet. We'll see what happens on that front. But Either way, looking at this, it's going to be an interesting primary cycle. So 2024 is upon us. 2023, in terms of electoral politics, is not that eventful. Obviously, we have the Wisconsin Supreme Court election. We have elections happening in Pennsylvania for the state court, Virginia for the state Senate, and I believe the state house. We have Kentucky's governorship, Mississippi's, Louisiana's, which will probably, the latter will be an easy pickup for Republicans. Mississippi uh, could be more competitive with Brandon Presley in the race, but as of right now, I'd still say it would be a hold. But then you have Kentucky, which is probably going to be the most high-profile election because you do have a Democrat who is an incumbent who is not hated as much as he possibly should be hated. So we'll definitely watch 
those races as the time comes. But in terms of 2024 content, what do you guys want to see? Obviously, I'm sure we're going to keep it up. We're going to introduce more shorts into the mix. But should we do another 2024 presidential tier list? Should we do predictions? Should we do a Nikki Haley versus Biden election prediction just to laugh at how electorally unviable she would be and lose to a vegetable possibly by a more decisive margin than a lot of people would think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd like to hear your guys' input in terms of the content you guys want to see this year. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.